Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. Well, it's an incredibly exciting day for me because the brand new Mavic Air 2 showed up this morning and I can't wait to get inside this box and start playing with the drone and get outside and start flying it. Now, as luck would have it, it seems like every time a new drone shows up lately, we have thunderstorms in New Jersey, so I can't go outside and fly and there's nothing more frustrating than having a brand new toy that you can't play with. But I promise you, if I get a break in the weather today and it stops raining, even for 30 seconds, I'm gonna have this thing up in the air, but tomorrow's supposed to be a beautiful day. So I'll be outside all day with my fully charged batteries flying like a madman, not like a madman, but I'll be flying a lot trying to get some footage to show you exactly what this product looks like from a video and a picture perspective but today i want to bust open the box now i haven't opened this and i can't tell you the amount of self-control it takes for me not to rip open a box right on the front porch and do my little happy dance with the new product because as an engineer and a nerd i love new technology i'm so seduced by new technology and i've said this before in the channel and i still believe it's true especially with this product this technology should not exist, especially at this price point. You should not be able to buy a drone that's this sophisticated, that does what these kind of drones do with modern technology. It's almost like DJI found some crashed alien spacecraft someplace and have it in a lab, and they've been sort of reverse engineering a lot of the technology to build these drones. When you think about the price point and the tech that's built into this, it doesn't add up. So from an engineering perspective, I love it. I love looking into it, and I get excited, and people say, how can you get excited with a new drone every time it shows up? Well, number one, I've had about 17 cups of coffee today so i'm wired anyway but the technology is what gets me going and i get so excited it's almost like i'm almost as excited as when i got married or had my had my kids okay maybe not that excited those are pretty important things but the drone is still pretty amazing so geez i hope my wife doesn't see this clip anyway we're going to get into the drone in a second now what i'm going to do is bust open the box again i haven't looked at it i have a good idea what it looks like just based on the other drones i own and the specs that are online but somehow holding it in your hands for the first time is just like a newborn baby. Here I go again. It's a beautiful thing. So I'm going to look at it. We'll, we'll share that experience together. Then I'm going to take a closer look at it because I want to put a nerd's eye to it and let you know what the sensors are, and what they do, and what it looks like, and how it compares to other drones. I'll come back at the end with just a brief comparison between the three models that are out right now from DJI. So the Mavic Mini, which is $399. This Mavic Air 2, which is $7.99, and the larger, uh oh, stuff's falling off the wall, I'm so excited. The larger Mavic uh, 2 Pro, which is $15.99, so you've got $400, $800, $1,600. $1 this is like in that Goldilocks zone between sort of good, beginner drone, excellent drone, phenomenal drone. So I'm going to compare it because I think at the end, when I get into that comparison, well, wait till leg get to the end. That'll keep you watching a little while. So anyway, let's get into the unboxing because I'm talking too much and I'm too excited. All right, so smaller box than I expected, but bigger than the Mavic Air. I'm sorry, bigger than the Mavic Mini. So let's take a look at it. Now, one of the things I find curious before I get into it, and man, am I trying, I'm trying so hard. The Mavic Mini looks like a Mavic Pro. The Mavic 2 looks like a Mavic Pro. The Mavic Air, the original one, looked nothing like a Mavic Pro. It was sort of like they said, okay, we got the Mavic Pro, let's build something completely different. This looks like a Mavic Pro. So to me, I think they've gone back to that standard Mavic Pro footprint with the Mavic 2 and the Mavic Mini. This looks a lot like a Mavic Pro. So I'm gonna call it, it's a Mavic Air 2, but it, more, it looks more like a Mavic Pro 2, which is confusing because they've got a Mavic 2. But anyway, it's a Mavic Air 2. All right, so let's get into it, man, oh man. So again, nice white box. That's the way DJ likes to do it. Very Apple-esque in their, in their view of things. See how slow I did that? Because I can't wait to look at it. Now, I'm not sure if the drone's on the top or in the bottom, but let's take a look. <laughs> it's right there in the top. There's the drone. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> all right, all right. One second. Man. <laughs> you know what? It's, um, it, it, I nailed it with the Goldilocks example because it's right between the Mavic Mini and the Mavic 2 as far as weight and size goes. It's... It's like small, medium, and large. It's perfect. It's in so many ways. But it does to me, I'll go back to it again, and I'll show you at the end the comparisons, but it looks so much, so much like a Mavic Pro or the Mavic Pro Platinum in its design. All right, so with the arms, same kind of folding, folding out the arms, and then fold down the bottom arms. No props on it yet, I'll put those on there. Even the way the battery mounts. So the battery mounts in from the top, two little clasps on the side, battery pops out like that. Again, the battery looks like a Mavic Pro and a Mavic 2. So very, very similar to the Mavic products. Okay, I got sensors in the back, and I'll take a closer look at this in a second. Gimbal shield on the front. Now, some of the innovations in this drone that I should talk about before I get into the specs, it's phenomenally sophisticated. And what I mean by that is there's a lot of things that are changing here. It's not just a new version of the Mavic. It's got ADS-B in it, so it can tell where other aircraft are in the sky. It's upgraded its OcuSync to OcuSync 2.0, which is gonna give you tremendously good transmission capabilities. It has a bigger camera, it's a half inch sensor that'll record 48 megapixel pictures, and I think it records 4K 60 frames a second. I'll check that spec in a second. I probably should know that, but I'm too excited to remember it. In addition to that, 
it's bringing that data back from the camera at 120 megabits a second, which is incredibly fast. That's 20 megabits faster than the Mavic 2 does it today. So sensing on this is front and back, no side sensing. It's got down sensors, but no up sensors. But for me, that crash avoidance is not that big a deal. The flight time on it, about 34 minutes, which is pretty cool. 30 minutes is about average for it. And again, the energy density in this battery um, is incredible. The fact that they can fly for 34 minutes with a battery this small just blows me away. Now, the flight distance, 6.2 miles because of the OcuSync 2 technology. But again, every time I say that, I have to caution you that we have visual line of sight restrictions in the US, which means you can't fly this further than you can see it. And for an old guy like me, that's about 1,500 feet where I'm squinting and barely see it with a beacon on the back of it. So if you're flying further than that, you're either Superman or you're breaking the rules. So just you know, try and keep it in visual line of sight so you don't get in trouble. All right, next I'm gonna look at some of the accessories. All right, so there's the drone. Oh man, is that beautiful. And again, I'm gonna compare it to the Mavic Pro, but to me, this looks like a, a tiny smaller, maybe a 70% size of the Mavic Pro. All right, so inside there's the top cover, nice little cradle there for your drone. Wouldn't be a bad thing to carry it around in. The remote controller, oh wow, look at this. <laughs> they changed the remote controller, so forever they've used the same Mavic Pro controller where the arms swing down on the bottom and the phone goes below it. This one, the phone goes above it, Oh, there we go. Okay, so that's really cool. It slides down inside the unit. I'll take a closer look at this in a second, but okay, so it springs up like that and it'll hold it and there's connections. Yep, there's a USB-C looks like connection in there that's already loaded up and they've got the Apple cable in there to start and it comes out and connects up to your thing. Now, that's a little bit short. If you're trying to put a tablet holder on or something, I'll talk about that kind of at the end because we're already cheating and bringing some accessories in for the Mavic 2 on the website. But okay, so from a comfort perspective, I can't really speak to it until I fly with it. But man, that feels really well balanced in my hands. I like it a lot. And the joysticks are hidden in the bottom. Okay, so we'll take again a closer look at that. Venting on the back. So I like the controller. I can tell already that it's pretty cool. So we're gonna play some time with that. Let's see what else we get in the kit. All right, I usually give you about 14 manuals with all the DJI products, but in this case, there's only two manuals, that's it. So I got a quick start guide, which will tell you how to get started. And then there's this Encyclopedia Britannica that probably has a bunch of, yeah, it's a bunch of different languages. So it's probably 10 pages of decent information about the specs and how to fly the drone. So there's your two instruction manuals. And then in the bottom of the box, oh boy, there we go. <laughs> What's that? That's this, looks like an accessory box. All right, so there's a flap on the top, let me pull that open. All right, charger, what else we got? Okay, it's a bag for the charger. A couple more connection cables. Let's just shake it all out. All right, there's the box. Let's get rid of that. All right, so obviously two sets of props and they're full props. I've got one set of four and I've got one set of two. So you've got a full set of props here and you've got another set that's a spare prop. Looks like, let me rip it open because I don't want to mislead you here. Don't rip the props. Be careful, Rick, with the props. They're dangerous and delicate. All right, so inside this guy, we've got, man, is this tough, plastic. They really don't want you to get inside the props. There we go. All right, so yeah, I was right. So it's two props. So you get a set of four. Feels like a set of four. Yeah, a set of four here and a set of two spares. Actually, no, I've got three spares. That's weird. Why are there three spares? Did I throw one on the floor? All right, so I got three spares. I don't get that. That's interesting. So three spares there. Let me open this one just to make sense of this whole thing. That's kind of cool. Maybe I got an extra spare there. That would be really cool. All right, so let's get inside. And I got three over here. So, okay, all right, I'm wrong. <laughs> See, this is what happens when you do an inboxing live. So I'm betting these are counterclockwise and these are clockwise. So essentially what I'm getting is two clockwise, two counterclockwise, and one spare of each. Okay, I'm glad I sorted that out because, man, I thought I got an extra spare prop there. Anyway, so you get a full set of props and a set of spare props. Here's a power cord for the power supply. Now the power supply is unique. A lot of people have asked me, can I charge the Mavic 2 batteries or Mavic Air 2 batteries with a standard USB charger? And you can't because they're specialized batteries. So here's the power brick that charges it, single connector on the end. Now you could have bought this kit in two different ways. You could have bought it like I did as a standard kit. Um, I wish I had gone for the Flymore combination, but they were back ordered and I didn't want to wait too long for them. So I went with the regular kit. But if you go with the Flymore combination, you actually get a little hub this plugs into that can charge three batteries at the same time. Here I'm going to charge one battery at a time, but look at that, there's a USB connection on the end so you can actually charge the controller as well. So pretty cool, you plug it in, you can charge all those devices. What else have I got? Oh, a cable. So it's a USB-A, full-size USB-A connection to USB-C connection. The USB-A will plug in here, the USB-C plugs into your controller right there, there's a USB-C connection. So you can actually charge the drone battery and the controller at the same time with one power supply. Uh, extra set of... Um, joysticks that fit on top of the uh, controller. So that's nice. You've got a set on the bottom already and a spare set because I guarantee you're going to lose those. If you've ever flown one of these drones with the removable joysticks and you unscrew them and try to put them back in and you're in tall grass and you drop them, you will spend 45 minutes trying to find those joysticks. All right, two extra cables here. So I've got 
Uh, again, it's a USB-C connection here, and the other end of it is either a micro USB, or in this case, it's another USB-C, and the one in there is an Apple. So they give you three cables that'll actually connect up to your phone inside the holder that look really short. They're about, uh, geez, I'm gonna say six and a half, seven inches, maybe. So if you're using a tablet, it's not gonna work. But again, if you need longer cables, check the Drone Valley website. We've got the 30 centimeter cables that'll plug in there and actually right-handed cables like this that'll connect up to your tablet or your phone. All right, so that's the unboxing. And again, I know I get excited about the unboxing stuff, but I love discovering what they're putting in the box. And I know if I'm buying something, I typically watch an unboxing video because I want to know how many props do I get? Does it include cables? Does it have everything I need to get started? Or as I'm waiting for it to be delivered, should I order a bunch of accessories so I've got everything I need the day it gets here? I think in this case, it's a very complete kit. You've actually got a set of extra props. So gosh forbid, if you run this thing into a tree or something, you can change those props out. So that's pretty much it for the unboxing. Stay, stay tuned now. I'm going to actually take a closer look at all the components and explain after I've played with them a little bit, because man, I can't wait to get my hands on this guy. Let me take a look at them and then I'll come back and do a closer look at all the components and show you exactly what they do. And then I'll come back and do a real quick comparison between this, the Mavic Mini, and the Mavic 2. Okay, so stay tuned. Let's start off by taking a closer look at the charging unit for the Mavic Air 2. It looks pretty much like any charger you'd have for a laptop, but it's built specifically to charge the Mavic Air 2, and all the specifications match the batteries perfectly. On the one end, you've got a custom connector that plugs into the battery. Now, if you've got this standard kit, you can only charge one battery at a time by plugging this into the battery, and you'll have to rotate through them. If you bought the Flymore combination, it comes with a really nice small hub that you can plug this into and connect three batteries at a time, and it still only charges one of them, but it can walk its way through those batteries batteries as the charge is complete. On the one end, you've also got a USB-A connection over here. That's a nice little touch that allows you to charge any portable device. So it's intended really to charge your controller with the included cable, but it'll also charge a phone or a tablet. The thing to keep in mind though, is that this has a limit of two amps of charging current. So it can't really charge big devices, but it's perfect for like phones and tablets and certainly the controller that comes with it. On the other end, there's a port there to connect the cable that's included. And you'll connect that up to the wall and that's all the power you'll need. Now the rating on the charger, it looks like a 13.2 volt charger, which is great. And it's got 2.82 maximum current output. So it's plenty big enough to be able to charge your batteries pretty quickly. So that's pretty much the charging unit. Pretty standard affair for DJI. Now we'll take a look at the drone, and you can see that the Mavic Air 2 is built to be incredibly compact and portable. They've done a great job of protecting all the important things once this thing is folded up. To open up the drone, hold it by the body, and you'll start with the top arms first, fold those out, now you'll notice about halfway through the travel, these are spring loaded, that it wants to spring open on its own. Don't let it snap open on its own. Always hold onto the arm all the way through the end of travel because even though you might get away with it a couple of times letting it snap open, over time that's gonna damage the sensitive hinge inside here because that torque snapping open really puts a lot of undue pressure on that hinge. So once those two are open, flip it over and you can open the bottom lengths by folding them down towards you. Now, since we've got it upside down, let's take a look at the bottom of it, and I'll point out a couple of cool things. Number one, it's a heat sink, so it's keeping the electronics inside at a comfortable temperature by radiating extra heat out with these heat fins down here. You'll notice two optical sensors there. That's the crash avoidance and sensing below, so it's coming down on something that's going to warn you. In the center is an LED. That'll light up your landing pad, and I think you're going to have control over that like you do in the Mavic 2 through the application, but I'll play with that in a little bit. But that's an LED that comes on and lights up the ground below it. On the back, there are two infrared sensors that are called time of flight sensors, and that's kind of a sophisticated technology. I'll probably do a separate clip on that just to explain how it works, but essentially it's sending out an infrared beam that ricochets off of something below it and comes back up, and it can calculate how close close it is to the ground or some other object based on the timing of that beam coming back. It's used in industry all the time, but that's your time of flight sensors. Now on the sides, no sensors because it has no side obstacle avoidance. On the back, there are two optical sensors here. And on the front, there are two more optical sensors here. So it's got protections built in for front. So it can sense crash avoidance that way, the back and down. So it's got three-way crash avoidance, and it doesn't have any side sensors or top sensors. I know a lot of people are gonna say, gee, why didn't they build those in? The truth is the sensors gather a lot of information, and that has to all be processed by the internal electronics. And the more sensors you put, the more complex that electronics is, and the more energy it drinks, and the more work it has to do. So keeping it down to three, I think, is a perfect mix of not eating up too much battery to maintain that sensing, and also gives you the protection you need pretty much where the stuff you're gonna fly into is in front of you, behind you or below you. Now, side sensors are nice, but for me, I don't really miss them. All right, so let's take a look at the battery. And again, I'd mentioned before how close this looks to the Mavic Pro to me. The battery assembly 
is released by pushing in these two clasps on the side. They're spring-loaded, so push those and you can lift up and pull the battery out. Boy, that battery looks just like a Mavic Pro battery. It's just a little bit smaller, just like the Mavic 2 as well. Now on the top, they've got a push button here that you use to turn it on, so the way you turn on all the DJI products is you tap it and hold it, and then eventually it'll spin up. You can also tap it once to see how fully charged it is. Now, between that first part of the clip and this one, I did charge up the batteries because I can't wait to get outside and fly this thing, but now I'm tapping it, you see four LEDs light up, and that lets you know you have 100% charge in the battery. If there were only three lit up, that would be 75%, two would be 50, and one would be 25 or below. If it's flashing, it's typically below that threshold. And to put the battery in, you can't put it in backwards, so if you try to jam it in this way, it's not gonna fit. It'll only fit one way, and when you put the battery in, don't just push down in the middle. I recommend pushing at the front and the back, and you'll hear a click when it snaps in there, always check to make sure it's fully seated because there have been times, even though the gravity is gonna help that battery stay in there, there have been times where a battery's like fully seated. I don't know if I can simulate it. Now this one's pretty good. It actually gets down there nice, but over time they get a little bit lazy. You wanna make sure that it's fully seated down because the last thing you wanna have is a drone up in the air where the battery shakes a little bit and you break that electrical connection and the circuitry resets. That's gonna cause a lot of problems for you. All right, a couple other things to notice. On this side, you have a little door on the bottom. If you open that up, that's where the micro SD card goes. So you can put up to a 256 gigabyte card in there. On the other side, there's another little door on the bottom. And let's open that up and take a look at what's in there. All right, I'm suspecting, yep, there you go. That's a USB-C connection. Now what that allows you to do is connect a USB-C connection up to this and the other end of it up to your computer and you can actually transfer the files off that micro SD card. Now, a lot of people like to do it that way. I typically pop out the micro SD card and I'll use like a three-in-one card reader to transfer those files over to my computer. It's just a lot faster for me. I also like to pull the card out and review them in the field. All right, let me take a look at the imaging package next. So you've got a gimbal clamp on the front, pretty similar to a lot of the gimbal clamps out there. Again, it looks just like the Mavic Pro gimbal clamp. The way you take that off is you push down and pull forward. So be gentle and pull that off. And then there's your imaging package. So this is the three axis gimbal that supports it. You can see that it's supported with um, suspensions inside as well. There's the camera. Again, a beautiful imaging package. It's a half inch sensor on there. Looks like Hasselblad technology. I'm gonna have to look a little deeper into that, but that half inch imaging sensor is also paired up with a much faster bit stream back. So it's got 120 megabits a second coming back from that. So that gives you that 4K ultra high definition imaging on the front of the unit. So very, very nice package there. All right, so I think that's pretty much it for the drone. Again, beautiful drone. To fold it back up, you'd reverse the process, fold the legs in underneath, fold these two into the top, snap the gimbal clamp on, and you're good to go. One other thing I did forget to mention, I didn't talk about the propellers, and I want to add that part of it now. So there are two sets of propellers. You'll notice on these two propellers, there is no line at the top. You don't see any white, but on these two propellers, see that white circle? And underneath it, see that white stripe on the motor? That way you know that these propellers go white to white, and these don't have any markings, and they go plane to plane, for lack of a better term. The way you take the propellers off is you hold the motor, push down on the propellers, and spin the top of the motor, and they pop off. That's pretty much it. So if you forget and you take all four propellers off, just look for the one with the circle on it and match it up with the white on the bottom. And again, all you do is push down, spin the motor, and let it go, and it locks in there, and you're in good shape. And that's pretty much it. Now, with the propellers, always inspect those propellers before you take off. The two things I caution people about are to make sure the battery's fully seated, single point of failure. If that fails, the drone's coming out of the sky. Make sure that the props are fully seated, because you might think you have them on, but if they're not fully seated and tight, they could pop off and the drone's coming down. The other thing is, always do an inspection of the propellers before you put it up in the air. Run your fingers along the outside edges and see if there's any gouges or nicks or any debris on them, and keep them clean and you'll be in really good shape. The last thing I'll mention about the props is it's got the, let me pull this one off. These props have the brand new little air wing on the back of it here. These are low noise, high performance props. And they kind of learned that in the Mavic Pro pa Platinum was the first product that actually had these kind of props on it. These tend to be a little bit more efficient than the standard props that are square in the end. They're also a little bit quieter. So they're doing everything right with this new Mavic Air 2. Okay, here we have the controller. Now, this is the way you'll get it. It doesn't have the joysticks assembled. The joysticks are in the bottom. To attach those, you just pop them out of their little holder and put them on up top. And they just screw on finger tight, so you'll line them up with the holes and screw them in. Now, I don't normally take these joysticks off. I usually leave them on, and I'll put them in the kit with them on. The reason I don't take them off is because I'm always worried that, you know, I'm gonna drop them in the grass, and then I'm gonna spend 20 minutes trying to find them, or worse, if I drop them in the grass and I get dirt and debris up inside those threads, and then put them back on, I'm transferring all that grit and dirt inside the controller, but totally up to you how you handle that. So there are your joysticks. On the front of the unit, you've got a couple of buttons along the bottom. This is your charge indicator, so again, I've charged this up. If I tap it once, it's fully charged. If this is blinking, it's below 
100%, somewhere between 175. If it's off and this is on solid, each of these represent 25%, so 25, 50, 75, 100. If it's blinking, it means it's a little bit below that level. As far as buttons go, return to home button right here. You tap that and hold it, it'll instigate the return to home. The drone will fly to whatever height you've got set, fly back and land. In the center, you've got your speed control, I'll call it. Normally, you'd fly in the normal position, which gives you the speed that you would fly at and do some really nice filming. If you want to go crazy fast, you put it in sports mode and it'll actually go at its top speed. It's not great for filming, but it's really good if you've got a location you're getting to that's pretty far away from you. I typically put it in sport mode, elevate, fly out to the location, drop down to normal mode, and do my filming. Then when I want to come back, I'll put it back in sport mode. Tripod mode slows everything down, so it's sort of a cinematic mode that forces you to do things a little bit slower. It'll slow your movements and your turns and everything else. So tripod mode's kind of cool, but I usually use normal, for when I'm filming and fast or sport mode when I have to get out to a particular location. On this side, you've got a function button and that can be programmed, I believe, through the application. I'll be looking at that in a little bit. And then on this side, I've got, looks like a, a sort of a circular button here that'll flip between recording and picture. So if I tap that, it'll move between pictures or recording. And then you've got one button here that instigates the starting of that. So if you're in picture mode and you hit that, it'll take a picture. If you're in video mode and you hit that, it'll start recording. On this side, there's our familiar gimbal wheel. So if you spin that, the gimbal's going to tilt down or tilt up. And there are some adjustments on the gimbal that I want to play within the application because when I looked at the specifications, it looks like it goes above 90 degrees, which is great. So it does crank up, I think up 40 degrees above horizon. And it also looks like it goes a little bit further beyond the down position as well. So I'm not sure if they're going to give us control of that, but the gimbal can move a lot more than normal. And then up top, you've got your tablet holder and your phone holder here. So you pull that out, and it springs out like this. Now, it looks to me like I can handle all the big phones that are on the market, but there's no way you're going to get a tablet in there. So you're going to have to use a tablet adapter, which sits in on top of this. And your phone will sit in these grooves right here and underneath this nice protective rubber piece up top there. The last thing I'll point out is the connections. I'm pretty sure you can see that if I get a little closer. But basically, you've got a cable in here that connects up to whatever device you're using. So you'll have to have the port on your device on this side, and you'll plug it in. Now, this is an Apple connector. If you have an Android product, you can unplug this one and plug in whatever connector you need to make the proper connection to your phone. That's a USB-C connection down there. So here's the connection for the Apple, and they include both a micro USB and a USB-C as well. Just plug it in, connect up to your device, and you're good to go. Now, if you do need a longer connector because you're using a tablet adapter, which is going to put the tablet up here somewhere, we have those on our website. We have um, this kind of cable in a 30 centimeter range, which will be USB-C on this end with either a micro and Apple or a USB-C on the other end. So pretty straightforward there. Again, really nice compact design. There's some venting on the back. Keep it nice and cool. I'm not sure if they've got an internal fan. I'll have to play with that a little bit once we get a little bit of time. Get, to get this thing outside and start flying it and play with it on the bench. But I do like this new design. I have to say that it seems really well balanced in my hands. I like that. I also like that I'm not swinging the arms out down the bottom. I had some issues with some of the remotes with those arms. So it is a really nice compact design. We'll have to see if they carry this forward with some of their newer quads. But for now, boy, I, I really want to get out and start flying this and see how this feels in your hands. Very nice product. Nice rubber grips on the bottom as well. That's kind of cool. But in general, that's your remote. I hope those details were helpful. And now I'll do a quick side-by-side -side comparison between all three models of portable drones currently in the DJI lineup. The Mavic Mini, Mavic Air 2, Mavic 2 Pro. And all three of these drones have a strong pedigree that go way back to the original Mavic Pro product, which was an epiphany for DJI. It was the first drone that was actually foldable, that was prosumer grade, that had a ton of advanced features in it, and actually, there it is right there. Now, that's proving my point from earlier. How many of you guys picked up on that? So here's the Mavic Air 2, side by side. And my point is, it looks like a little bit smaller Mavic Pro. So what you've got is DJI, the brilliant engineers at DJI have stuck with the Mavic Airframe design for all of these products. And the original product that came out three years ago, I almost couldn't summon the words to describe how impressed I was with that technology. When Michael Perry walked out on stage to show that drone and pulled it out of his pocket, I almost fainted as a nerd. I looked at it and went, yeah, they've definitely got alien technology somewhere in their labs because they took a Phantom 4, which was a bigger drone, and basically broke all four arms, shrunk it down, and built in a ton of advanced features. It was the first time they used DocuSync. And this thing, I still fly it today. It's still one of my favorite drones. Just was an amazing technology. So what you've got here is generation one, generation two, generation three, 
generation three and a half or generation four. So they're building on this strong legacy of incredibly cool technology, making small iterative changes in each of these models to improve them. So a little better imaging package, they fly longer, they fly further, they're safer. They've got advanced features built into it. So what you're getting with the Mavic Air 2 is a drone that really fits perfectly in between the two other drones that are on the market today. So you've got the Mavic Mini, which is around 400 bucks. This one comes in at around 800 bucks, so just to double the number. And this one comes in around $1,600. So for my money, if you're choosing between these today and you're brand new to the hobby, wonderful place to start. You're getting about 60% of the functionality here at half the price. If you're gonna step up to something that has a 4K feature, this is the one you wanna go with because doubling the price gives you about 80% of the functionality of what the Mavic 2 gives you. So this is a perfect middle of the road. I'm gonna call it a prosumer quality drone. Now, I haven't flown it yet, but based on the specs, I'm telling you, this is gonna be fitting the bill for most of the people out there. And again, I'd start here, get used to the hobby, make sure you're happy with it. Then you can always upgrade to this later. But if you wanna jump in whole hog, this is a good place to be. If you're serious about it, you're gonna do it as a profession and you need the absolute best pictures and images out there, this is the one to go with it gives you the one inch sensor or the zoom gives you the ability to zoom in but the mavic 2 is really kind of the pinnacle the best you can get in the prosumer space i'm going to call it a professional drone because i use this in the phantom 4 pro v2 for all of my professional work but i love the fact that all three of these are available so 400 800 1600 the choice is totally yours you can't go wrong with any of these and i'm telling you i can't wait to get this guy out and start flying it because i think again the goldilocks conversation the bed was too small, the bed's too big, the bed is just right. So for me, I can't wait to get outside and start flying it. And that's pretty much all I had for today. And I promise you, I've got a ton of comparison clips coming. I can't wait to get out there and start doing these clips, but we're supposed to have a beautiful day for the next couple of days, beautiful weather. And I'm gonna get outside and fly like crazy with these drones. And I'll do comparison side by side between these two, between these two, between this. And a question I get all the time is, how does this compare to the new Evo 2 that's out there? So I'm gonna spend a lot of time doing a comparison clip side by side with this one and the AK Evo. I'll compare it to the Skydio, I'll compare it to the Anafi, because I know a lot of people are looking to get into the hobby this summer. And man, I can't tell you how much fun you're gonna have. So if you're waiting to get into the hobby and you're thinking, oh, there's a lot of changes going on. I'm not sure if it's something I should be doing. Maybe I should wait. Don't wait, go out and buy a drone. You can afford this one, probably. You definitely get into something like this that'll get you out there and flying. If you want a little better drone, like I mentioned, this is the one to go with, but don't wait. Find what you can afford, buy the drone, get out there and start flying because I'm telling you, it's gonna change your life. It's a stress reliever. It gives you a different perspective on the world. It gets you outside in the fresh air and the sunshine. The family can come with you. It's a wonderful event for everybody to get out there and start flying. But anyway, stay tuned to the channel. I'm gonna have a lot more comparison clips coming. If you need accessories, we've got accessories on the website for all of these. We just started bringing accessories in for this one as well. So if you need a longer cable, you need battery protectors, you need a couple other things, spare props, we've got all that stuff on the website. But that's it for today. So thanks an awful lot. If you've got questions, Questions you want me to answer on any of these drones, drop them in the comments below. I promise to get back to you as quickly as I can. We've been super busy. A lot of people subscribing to the channel. So if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button down there and join the Drone Valley family because not only do I have more clips coming this summer, but we've got a ton of drone giveaways going on that you're definitely going to want to get in on. So if you're subscribed to the channel, you can enter those contests and you can probably win a drone from us because we're giving a bunch of them away this summer. So stay tuned to the channel for that stuff. But anyway, I'm having a heck of a time and I'm going to fly this thing upstairs. I'm going to hide all the lamps and flatten the area as best I can and start flying this thing around, but I can't wait to get outside with it. So thanks for watching. And until next time, <laughs> happy flying. Mm -hmm.